So guys, so today we are gonna be talking about the latest situation on the COVID cases or is this update on the update on the COVID cases in Japan and also in Tokyo as well as the recent news that has been said that Japan is uh, maybe about to open up based on the some of the news and also uh, from what the the thing that the government have been given out after the election general election that they want to open up well first of all the covid cases around japan is maybe around 350 cases i think for today and also in tokyo itself i think the new cases has reached to i think was it wasn't no it i think i think it was the all-time low that of 29 with the death still as all oh, the that is let's let me check but basically it's it looks as if it's dropping down a lot and also the vaccination rate has also been increased and it reaches i think around 70 percent from what i saw last time yeah two deaths or i think two deaths or no, it's only two deaths for today. And then the for the vaccine situation, let me check. Uh, for the testing has been pretty low since also the government has also reduced and also because no one is really, let's just say they don't really like how I say, a lot of them have already, have already get vaccinated so they are more much more safe and all of that and with, and some of them even still very healthy and like why would they get to go to check for covid if they are very very much healthy no symptoms of covid but what's baffling is that some of the experts that has been in let's just say well, I don't know whether you call this experts or what, but I don't really know, but it's quite baffling when they are talking about how foreigners are the one causing the COVID to increase, which is quite confusing in a sense for me that things have gotten to the point of, of let's just say, let's just say a problem where well, I would say that they are very xenophobic that they really make as I make uh, the view of foreigners in Japan as a disease instead of something good for economic and for all, all the matters and for now at least so I'm gonna talk about the vaccination situation for 21st of October so after for the fully vaccinated it has around 86,937,361 people getting at least already two dose more fully vaccinated and for the one dose it was around 96,406,686 people with a total percentage of population of 76% of them, 76.6 for one dose and fully vaccinated 69.1%, which shows that <clears throat> at least it was safe to open for uh, foreigners. Well, not to tourists, not tourists yet, but for foreigners who have purpose to come to Japan short or, or long term. And so Japan and for the statistics of students waiting to come to Japan, it has been over since October of first. There has been over three hundred seventy thousand, well, not students, but foreigners itself, waiting to enter Japan due to COVID, according to Nikkei Asia. Nikkei Asia. And most of them are technical interns. Some of them are students, and some of them are, yeah, basically just have businesses in Japan. And the LDP or the Liberation Democratic Party, I think, 
Liberal Democratic Party has been talking about lifting some of the restrictions here and there about short-term business traveler going to Japan to be lifted a little bit and then uh, as of October 31st according to some of the news outlets <clears throat> but then it's still unsure whether students can enter or not I don't think it from what I think I see it, students will enter I think Corrected by the government around end of the year, December or January, which is also quite concerning, as it's still very long for us to be able to enter Japan around two months, and also some of the COEs are dying. From even though, like from what I heard, they have been extending the COE towards who usually get three months to you know, six months, so. People who are in, applying in July and get it in July are pretty lucky because they are still can get, go through until December or January like that. While people who applied in April or in let's just say last year, it would be quite much more difficult as they have to reapply for the COE again before they have to apply for the visa, which is extra work, I would say. But then, another good news is that, let me think, uh, another good news is that COVID has stayed low and the uh, border are rumored to be open in 31st of November. Some of the restrictions lifted like for short-term business traveler and also for well, for students, they still talking about this possibility of opening up this year, I think end of the year, November or December or even January next year. And for me personally, I'm I'm very, uh, very cautious. Well, I'm not really cautious, but I'm very careful on this situation. But because I don't really want to go through the ordeal of giving a high expectation and shut down because they say they don't because they just say oh we just don't want to accept anymore we thought we have to open up but we don't want in the end and one of the thing that makes me get angry some of them saying that yeah uh, foreigner become a disease and they bring it they spread it around japan and should not be allowed in and some of them even want to tighten the restriction and even one of the political party is saying that they want to tighten the tighten it more for the restriction, which is quite a funny situation. And as for some of the Japanese that I Japanese people that have seen like let's just say David Rossi, I think the guy who just you know interview around Japanese people talking about and some these Japanese people are also feeling some of the impact as because the foreigner is the one who can <coughs> it's not the one who can but it's one of the main reason why Japan economy has been booming recently it was ba- mainly because of the foreigners and if that aspect is gone then the economy is economic and financial wise becomes a huge problem which I see in Osaka itself Usually in the Notonbori area, I would say around that area, usually influx of foreigners would come in and just go here and there, buy stuff, takoyaki and all of that. But these businesses are currently struggling because the lack of foreigners in, is one of the problem that has been going on in Japan, and with such a low I would say low rate of let's just say more newborn babies being made in Japan cause the population to reduce even with COVID it reduced more by year over year and this con- quite concerning for me personally because you know a low in a low a low population means that it's quite dangerously going towards the extinction stage, which is what we don't want for Japan. 
That's why we also, uh, a lot of people have urged Japan to open up for students and for foreigners itself. And even the US, what is the US general, basically the US have also, like some, a lot of researchers and university have also asked Japan to open up their border for students and researchers and basically just foreigners itself. Since they are also struggling to adjust the time, like some of them have to wake up at 3 a.m. just to attend some class and 2 a.m. just to attend some class, which is very much, I would say, un uncomfortable at, at one point because how would you study at midnight or 1 to a.m.? Like, it's not quite nonsense at first for me personally if i have to do that i i will refuse but luckily i but for me luckily i live in a place where only different time difference isn't that much but for people who have already have a high expectation of going to japan they also have already prepared everything except for the border to waiting for the border to open and japan is saying that this some of the japanese people saying this hurtful things like this foreigner is the one who bring the disease into Japan, which can be quite hurtful. That's the reason why I'm very concerned about some of these Japanese people refusing the foreigner. But most of them, I would assume, would be very welcoming because they also have a lot of impact on Japan economy and all stuff. But then, well, I'm gonna still keep my hopes. Well, not that high, but I still keep my hopes up just to be positive and for once, I would say, about this situation is that if Japan were to open up on by the end of the year, it means that it, it would be a good situation for me and basically everyone who are stuck outside of Japan to come to Japan. And hopefully we could go in as quickly as possible so that in case the worst case scenario would happen in which they would just open and the COVID cases increase again and they plan to shut down the border again which we don't want to see I mean some of them are very really fu funny comments like talking about let's just say how do I say it talking about how they want to achieve zero COVID, which is never going to happen to Jap to anyone in the world, because as you can see, it already spread like wildfire. I don't think there can be any more ways to make it zero again. So well, we are still waiting for now for the very well. This is only news and and prediction and well, my prediction by itself and also by news they have been talking about it but still haven't of been really official yet. it's only just rumor so yeah, well i'm gonna keep my hopes up and uh, that they would be opening very very soon and by the end of the year even so hopefully you guys would continue this update until the until basically they open it up and yeah i mean that's it for now so like subscribe and comment for more future videos and comment on, and com basically just comment on your opinion on the news that on 31st of December that it's going at uh, 31st, 31st of October that it's going to basically just come open the border for Japan which is for some of for some of the let's just say short term business and and basically just that I would say um, but what do what do you think should they open also for students? or for workers or couples or everyone else and yeah basically like comment subscribe and share this video for more future videos and see you guys next time bye bye